Have you ever wondered how a painting is made? Or maybe you're an artist looking for tips and advice for your own artwork. Well, I'm starting another painting today and I'm going to take you through my painting process from beginning to end and I'm going to give you some tips that I've discovered. So make sure you watch till the end to see how I turn a blank canvas into a work of art. Before we get started, only 36% of everyone watching is subscribed. So do me a favor and click that subscribe button so I can continue to make these subjectively brilliant paintings. To get started, the first thing I ask myself is what are you painting? This could be a tough question to ask yourself as an artist. What should you create? One popular opinion is to create something that brings you joy. What do you want to paint? What makes you happy? Because if you do what you love, it'll resonate through your work. I found this to be true for some projects, but not all of them, especially when talking about commissions. So take this one with a grain of salt. Another popular opinion is that the purpose of art is to evoke emotion. So you should only paint what you believe is going to spark an emotional response. But I argue that artwork already does that. Some better than others, but all artwork has the ability to evoke some type of emotional response. So my advice is you shouldn't get hung up on that opinion either. My favorite thing to do if I'm struggling to figure out what to paint or if I feel stuck is to look at my surroundings and find anything. It can be a still life on your desk area. It can be someone close to you. It can be a coffee mug. It can even be this spray paint can. So let's turn this can into a character for this next painting. This isn't a drawing tutorial or a character theory video, so I'm not going to go into detail about how I created this character. But if you're interested in that kind of video, let me know in the comments. After sketching my character, I need to make a plan for this painting. I come up with a plan for each of my painting projects, and I do that by asking myself some simple questions. What will the background look like? Will I paint the background first? What colors will I use? How big should this painting be? How long do I think it should take me to finish this project? Questions like these help me create a plan for how to work on my painting. After coming up with a plan, I can choose the paints that I'll use and what materials I'll need. I primarily paint with acrylic paints, but I also like to explore different mediums, mostly because family and friends get me art supplies for birthdays and Christmas. But I prefer to use acrylic paints, and I usually always use golden brand acrylic paints when I'm doing fine art paintings. Once I have all of that figured out, I can prep my canvas. This can mean adding more gesso, adding a layer of white paint, or fully painting my background before moving on to the next step. For this painting, my canvas is pre-gessoed, so I'm going to paint directly on the canvas and I'm starting with my background. I'm going to paint a checkered background with a drip across the top, because I think that's going to look awesome. Here's a tip that you can use in your artwork. Try the stuff you don't like first, which is the same thing I tell my kids when they don't want to eat something for dinner. The best way to know what works for you and your artwork is to try everything. And along the way, you're going to come across something that doesn't seem appealing. For me, that was digital art. I felt like that was cheating and that true artists only do traditional artwork. Little did I know that AI art was right around the corner. But even though I didn't like the idea of digital artwork, I tried it. And it's not exactly my cup of tea. I still prefer paintbrushes and a canvas, but I have found so many uses for it with my artwork. I draw my sketch, bring it into Procreate, fix imperfections, play with colors. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with digital art. Then I print that out and transfer my sketch directly onto my canvas. I use graphite paper and this stuff is amazing. You just tape it down and anywhere that you put pressure, the graphite is going to transfer onto your surface, which means I can take my sketch from Procreate, print it out, and then transfer it directly onto my canvas. So as long as I have a steady hand, I can get my exact sketch on the canvas. Graphite paper completely changed my artwork for the better. Before I was using graphite paper, I would paint freehand on my canvas. Then for a while I tried sketching directly on my canvas and then painting. But once I started using graphite paper, everything changed and I have not looked back. After transferring my sketch, I need to decide if I'm going to use a wash or a matte medium. So you might be asking, what is a wash? It's a really thin paint that's used to stain canvas. This step's optional in my painting process and there are three reasons I would put a wash on my paintings. I either use it to protect the sketch I just transferred onto my canvas, or I use it to undertone my painting. But the number one reason I would use a wash is because I just don't want to film white canvas. When doing video, white is not a great surface for filming. It throws off the contrast, and if I adjust my camera to the brightness of the canvas, the surrounding area gets too dark to film. But if you're going to use your wash as an undertone, make sure the undertone matches your color palette. I usually always use a light brown because that typically works for any color palette, and it's great for blending and shading. Alternatively, if I've already painted my background, I'll use matte medium instead of a wash. Matte medium dries clear, and just like using a wash, a layer of matte medium will keep the sketch from smudging, rubbing off, or turning the back of my arm gray. And here's another tip. There's no one size fits all for painting. So far, this is my step-by-step -step process for painting, but this isn't how I create my characters, and it's not a roadmap for exactly what you should do every time you paint. 
You should be experimenting. See which one of these steps or tips works best for you, then throw the rest out. I've seen other artists process throughout the years. I've seen tips, tricks, different styles, and all kinds of different painting methods. I take what works best for me and I leave what doesn't. That doesn't mean that those artists are doing anything wrong or that I think I'm a better artist than they are. It just doesn't work for me and my process. I prefer to do things a different way. So take the tools and advice that works for you and forge your own path. Now I'll need to match my paints to the color palette that I plan on using. There are a lot of times that I don't have the exact color that I need and I have to mix my paints in order to get the color that I want to use. But even if I have the exact color, I still need to mix darker and lighter versions of the color. That way I can blend them while shading. So color matching and color mixing is a very important step when preparing to paint. Usually I don't mix anything until I'm painting, but if you want to pre-mix your colors, you can get containers that'll seal and store your paints. That way you can just grab the paint you need and get started. But if you're going to use those containers, you need to make sure it has a tight seal. And even if it does have a tight seal, you can't leave it in there too long or else your paint is going to dry out. Which is why I wait until I'm painting to mix any of my paints. Finally, after all the prepping, all the work I've put into getting this canvas ready, painting the background, designing the character, transferring the sketch onto the canvas, after all of that work, now we're ready to get started with the first layer of paint. I use two different methods for adding the first layer of paint to any character, and it all depends on the project that I'm working on. The first method is if I have a dark background, I'll fill my character with white paint. This serves two purposes. I can see the lines for my character, and it makes my colors more vibrant while painting. If I don't put this first layer of white, I'll have to paint tons of layers to cover the dark areas, which becomes incredibly time consuming. The second method I use is to fill each area with its corresponding color. And at this point, I don't focus too much on detail or making it look perfect. I just want to color everything in. This is also a great method for when I'm suffering from procrastination, which we've all been through. That feeling that you can't start painting yet because you've never washed the back of your fridge. So now is the time to do it. This method helps me take small steps towards painting. Then once I get hooked, I can break free from any procrastination that I might be feeling. So if you're ever struggling to get started painting, the best thing to do and the best advice to follow is to just get started. After the first layer is done, I just keep going. Paintings always go through this weird period where I worry that it's not going to work or that it's not going to turn out the way that it should. But then it hits this moment where it turns a corner and starts looking amazing. You have to have the confidence to just keep working. Anything that doesn't look right can always be covered with more paint. So I keep adding layers, painting over darker layers with brighter colors, adding shading to build up highlights, each layer a little brighter than the last to add dimension to my painting. For this painting, I'm using a technique called cell shading. This is a cartoony shading style that involves filling each section with its corresponding color, and the shadows have hard lines opposed to smooth gradient blending. It's no secret that this next part is my least favorite part of any painting but it's absolutely necessary, especially with cartoon characters or with characters that have hard lines. I hate this step because of all the work that it takes to get to this point and how easy it is to ruin a painting at the finish line. You never know how steady your hand is or isn't until it has to be. Once I start outlining, I start feeling like my hand is quaking and I just can't seem to get a straight line no matter how hard I try. Which brings me to another tip. Do hand exercises. It's incredibly important and surprisingly helpful to do some simple stretches and exercises to improve your steady hand. You could have years of limitless painting experience and knowledge, but that is completely useless if you can't draw a straight line. What I like to do is practice drawing every day, and I use this. It's a stiff putty with dill weed mixed into it. You can use it anywhere, which makes it a passive exercise, which makes it easier to squeeze into a daily routine. Now that I have my painting finished, the background is painted, the characters colored, shaded, and outlined, I'm ready to sign my painting. Contrary to popular belief, paintings are not signed with leftover paint, residual paint, or even new paint straight from the tube. What you need to use is fluid paint, or paint that's been watered or thinned down. My favorite is liquid acrylics because you can use it straight from the bottle. But if you aren't using fluid acrylics or you just don't have any, you can mix water with your acrylic paint. And you want to water it down until it almost starts running. You want it free flowing, but not too free flowing. I highly recommend practicing signing your paintings. Not only do you want to get good at mixing the water and paint together, you also want to be able to sign like it's second nature. Because it sucks to finish a painting just to mess up on the signature. And now we're done. Except there's one very last step that I do with every one of my paintings. After drawing, prepping, painting, transferring, painting, blending, painting, and signing, the last thing I do is seal my painting with varnish. 
The varnish I use protects my painting from UV, which prevents the paint from fading, and it makes the paint more vibrant. Like any art supply, there are several different brands and types of varnish. Spray varnish, matte varnish, gloss varnish. So this is one of those things that you'll need to experiment with to see what works best for you and what you like best for your artwork. So that's it. That's my painting process in a nutshell, and it's just that easy. Comment below if you think there's anything I didn't cover that you'd like to see more of. Check out these videos on my channel to see more of my artwork. Or you can head over to my website where all my artwork's available and it ships anywhere in the U.S. absolutely free. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and sharing. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.